Accelerators Live. How are you guys doing today? It's your mentor, Edwin Darris, coming to you live. And I'm just here to uh, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions that you guys submitted. So I'm looking forward to answering these today. So thank you guys. All right, so the first question that I have for today is from Demarius Tooks. Um, the question says the following. After you set a larger goal and you know it takes time to achieve, how do you stay focused along the way? I do not have a business set up yet. I'm working towards saving 10,000 by June 1st, 2021, so I can have capital when I do. I'm asking this question because sometimes I feel lost and I do not know who I am or what I want in life. I could be, I could, <clears throat> it could be I'm not sure how to express myself or what I've done while I'm working to save money. How do I not get lost in the process? And when you're young like me and don't know your purpose in life, how do you find it and what do you do in the meantime? So, um, this is a great question, Demarius. I would just say there's a couple things that I would say here. Number one, I, just, I probably have like a little bit more questions to ask. Like, for example, like, um, you know, what kind of business do you want to start? Like, why is it that you want to set up? Why do you want to save $10,000? Um, is that a number that you need to start your business? Can you start it now? Um, another question that I would ask is, are you working full time, part time? If you're working part time, can you start this business on the time that you're free? You know, maybe you're working um, 20 hours a week. Maybe you could put another 20 to 40 hours a week on the other time that you're not working right now, right? So I would just consider that. Um, I would also look at what what other goals have you had, whatever, whatever big achievements have you done up to this point? So like, I always like to look at, if you're able to look at some big achievement that you've done in the past, then that could be something that you could look at and be like, wow, like, you know what, I've done this before. That means I can do this other thing. Sometimes it's, it's good to just remember what things that you've done in the past. And I feel like remembering those things will give you more confidence to actually get those things done in the future. So I would just kind of look at that stuff. And then um, also another thing that you said was also, and when you're young like me and don't know your purpose in life, I feel like when when you're young, I feel like there's uh you could look at it as a negative, a positive. You could, even when you're older, you could look at that as an old, or, you know, I'm too old to do this or do that. And I feel like it's always really good to just look at other people that exist out there that have done big and, you know, big, huge things when they were young. If you look at like a lot of social media companies, you know, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg founded it when he was young, you know, and there's a lot of other people that have, have had very successful businesses when they were young, people that are probably even younger, you know, 18, 19, 17, 16 years old, that have had a lot of success. And so what I would say is, look to look to see who are models out there that are people that are having success and i'm not exactly sure what industry that you're looking to get into but look at maybe in the industry that you're looking to get into i would bet that there are people that are young as young as you or younger that are having you know way more success than people that have been in the industry maybe 20 30 years um so it just depends on the industry that you're in i would look at that and i'm just curious to know what industry are you in like what well, because you said you're you're working at a job right now so my question would be, is it something related to what you're doing? That way you have experience or are you starting fresh? So just kind of, I would just keep that, keep that in mind when you're kind of jumping into something. If you don't have the experience, it's okay. I just kind of maybe look for models that exist out there, right? All right, perfect. And then let me move on to question number two. Question number two is from Abraham Marcos. All right. Abraham says, at what point am I crossing the line between boss and employee? Hey, Sean, I need some advice. I recently hired a new employee. We've been paying him day to day to get them back on his feet. Recently, we decided to have him go full time and put him on payroll. I've already given him, given him a pay advance. And today he asked if I would be interested in buying some HVAC material left over from a side job he did a while back. I know this would help him out a bit, but at what point am I crossing the line between boss and employee? I'm really not sure how about how I feel about this, and I want to make the right decision and keep it professional. Thank you. All right, so there's a lot of things I would say here. Um, number one is like I would just mainly say, you know, the main thing I would look at a situation like this is the following. Do you see potential in this guy? Do you see, like, what, like, you hired him for a reason, I'm imagining. I don't know the particular reason, but I would just say the following. If you hired him and you see a lot of potential in this guy, I would just say, then, yeah, that's fine. You can give him a pay advance. Why not? If 
I, if, if you don't, if, if he's asking you to buy material and you don't need it, then I will say no. Like that's not necessary. You don't need to buy stuff from people if you don't need it. You know what I mean? I would just say, you know, I would just politely just let him know, like you know what? Thank you for letting me um, tell me about the material that you're offering. Um, at the moment, I have five of those, so like you know, I have more than enough material for that at the moment. But later on, if I if if, if I need it, I'll definitely come back to you if I know of someone that needs that type of material, uh, I would definitely let them know about that and just let them know or just tell them you can sell it on Craigslist or something like that. Just kind of give them a little idea for that. And then um, um, you said, am I, at what point am I crossing line between boss and employee? Uh, that, that's a question that you might want to look at maybe like legally looking at an HR person that knows, you know, these the legal boundaries between, you know, boss, employee, and crossing the boundaries and stuff. But I would say overall, if you're going to be a great person, you're a great leader, and you want to, you're going to, you want to help somebody out, and if you have a, uh, you're in a position to, and you see potential with this person for the long term, then I would say definitely, why, why not help them out? You can definitely help out uh, employees. I've, I've given loans to my employees before, 3000 2000 in that range and then have them pay him back over a couple, you know, over weeks of, uh, from their pay. So I would definitely look at that. And then um, now another thing that you did say in the, in the, at the very beginning, you said, um, I hired a new employee. We've been paying him day to day to get them back on his feet. So like, I'm just curious, did you hire him just to get him back on his feet? Was he someone that actually had value to your company or did you just hire this person because you felt that, um, you know, you want to help somebody out? Like, I think a business is a good place to help somebody out, but you want to be careful that you're actually getting someone that's qualified for the positions that you want and not just kind of like, let me help this person out and give them a little bit of extra, you know, extra job. You, uh, if you if you want to do that, that's fine. I'll just, I would just say be careful with that uh, in case that you um, are hiring someone that you don't really need in your business. All right, so then let me go to the next question. Dan Razumowski, <clears throat> he asks, for generating leads, what would be the best way to spend money? Home advisor, should I spend money on SEO? Should I hire an agency to take care of all the needs? Should I focus on one platform or spread it out? Currently, I have three websites, Adio Inc., Adio Roofs, Adio Inc. Net. I will be building Adio Decks. I'm building out the website so they can be more specialized and help out with the SEO and have a wider reach of people. I do not know what direction I should, be, I should head with marketing, Hire different freelancers to manage Google ads, Facebook ads. If I use Home Advisor, they send it to five people, and from all the leads, I get only clo I only close about forty percent due to the amount of people that they send uh, that they send them out to. Should I hire a marketing agency that will do the SEO, FBA, F Facebook ads, marketing for me to free up my time and have them fully accountable? I found one in Colorado, Marketing Three Hundred and Sixty. They include that. They also include that I can use the Denver Broncos logo and be the official Denver Broncos roof, roof replacement deck builder. The marketing agency will cost me cost the most, but looking to get a million sales for 2021, you need to really change up the game to get my own leads. We'll get to a budget of 2000 a month on advertising. Elevator pitch. Construction company specializing in decks and roof, roof replacements. Looking to grow to five locations in the state of Colorado, working with commercial and residential. All right, perfect. So there's a couple things that I would, that I would say here for sure. I was like, um, so first of all, I, was, I, I did email you about this and I asked you how, how successful is the home advisor lead. So you did mention that it's getting you leads and it's costly. Um, you know, it's kind of vague. I would look into that. Like, I know you said it's costly, but like how much is the profit? It's a free lead. Like uh, if you're getting a free lead and uh, cause like, I, and I, this is what I compare this to. So my, my brother, he works at a real estate agency. It's like top, maybe top in Maryland or something like that. It's part of uh, Remax, but it's uh, like an uh, agency within the agency, and they're they're one of the top ten or top five or something like that. And they get they pay for leads off Zillow, and it's kind of similar to what you're telling, what you're saying is like they send out the lead, and then they like they send out the a lead, and they like maybe five phones will ring at the same time, and whoever picks it up gets the lead. So is those these are like really for sure leads, and they get them all the time, and they close houses on them all day long. So just because it's costly, I wouldn't, I would, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't know the numbers on it, but I would definitely look at looking at the numbers. Like if you looked at 10 of those leads, yeah, they were costly. And then um, you had to pay more for them and you're competing with other five other people, but maybe someone else can close them for you, or maybe you can close them for, for the leads or something like that. And so I would look at the numbers of those leads 
and maybe you might double down on those leads. If those are really, if they make you a good good amount of money, I mean, I'm probably I'm assuming that you're the best leads for you are the ones that you get on your own that you don't have to pay pay for, right? Like maybe word of mouth leads, but if you're paying for these home advisor leads, I would just say, you know, do the I would say look at the numbers and see how they work out, right? And then maybe you can continue doing that alongside of everything else that you're doing. And then um, you also mentioned here, you said, uh, should you do, should you hire freelancers? Should you get a marketing agency? I would personally say, I just hired a marketing agency for my retail stores and I would just say, why not? You know, I feel like you can do, uh, you can hire uh, freelancers to do like one thing here, one thing there, one thing there. Um, but you could also hire a marketing agency that does everything for you. So I think that if you're looking to get to a million in sales, I feel like you can always test it. You know, you can always test it, uh, test three months, six months, a year. You know, you can test things and see, are they getting you results? Are they getting you leads? Um, are they giving you, are you seeing a bump in your business? Are you seeing people that are coming directly to your company as a result of these, of this marketing agency? So you'll be able to, I think you, you'll be able to measure that and, and make sure that you're able to measure what, what's coming in. So I would say, I like the marketing agency idea. I feel that if you have the time, you could try these other stuff. I mean, going to freelancers, you know, going on Upwork, going on all these other sites that exist. You could try that. Um, my question to you is, have you tried that already? And what, is, what have your results been? And um, if they've been great, then maybe you should continue that and continue that model. That, that, that might be something to look at. And then, um, and then um, what's it called? Uh, you, they, you did mention that the marketing agency can get you a tag name. Yeah, they sound like they, they might know what they're doing. So you might want to check them out see maybe they can get references or just test them out and pay for them for them a couple of months to see you know, what kind of results it is. I'm assuming that, you know, you can work that into your budget and stuff. I feel like that sounds something like that could, that could work out for you. It's all about testing, right? You test it and see if it works. If it doesn't, then you might have to just scrap it. You know, that's what I would say about that. And then the other thing I was just going to say is, um, one thing that you mentioned here, I know you didn't really ask about this. Um, you just, I, I did email you. You said that you just added the roofs into your business. And then I'm just curious, like, what made you add the roofs? I know I'm, I'm assuming people will always ask you for additional services. So I would just say be careful. Maybe what if you expand? If you're doing really good on, on, on what you're already doing, maybe expand that and do, continue to do that and focus on that. So just be careful on that aspect. And then I'll go to the last question of the day which is from, <clears throat> from Kelly Killingsworth. And her question is, what is a professional way to answer a client who asks to receive a specific itemized quote after you have given them a, the bid for the job? What is a professional way to answer a client who asks to receive a, spe a specific itemized quote after you have given them the bid for the job? I own a small construction company that specializes in fences, decks, roofs, and small interior renovations. I put a bid on a garage remodel where I contracted the electrical out. I added 20% on the electrician's bid, not sure if that's kosher, plus my materials and my time. After giving my bid, the client then asked for an itemized quote. I feel like this is a great question. I feel like at the end of the day, we always want to, um, there's always these tricky questions that, cut, that, that clients will ask you that like put you in an uncomfortable position, right? And I feel like it's all com it all comes down to uh, what kind of what uh, Tom Black mentions a lot is having scripts, right? You have a script, and what you're looking to do right now is to develop an answer for what you're asking, right? Because maybe maybe this is the first time someone asks you this. Maybe people have asked you this before, and I feel the best way to do it is just testing out different different methods. You know, I, before the call, I kind of googled a little bit about this, and there's people that will say, you know, no, I'm going to charge them. If they want to itemize quote, I'm going to charge them to that. And then you could say, uh, you know, that you you book that into your price. I don't know if I would do that, but that's one one method of doing it that someone said. You know, so I would just kind of uh, research, research a little bit about what methods that you can use, and 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 and, and work that way into your method. You know, it, it, my question to you would be, how many, how often do you get uh, customers asking you for itemized quote? Is it like out of a hundred? Is it one out of a hundred? Is it ten out of a hundred? Is it is everybody asking for itemized quotes? So um, so if it's everybody asking or very frequent, then yeah, I definitely I would look into it. And even if it's not frequent for this one customer, I would just think of think of something. How would you like? I would just role play with maybe maybe role play with your spouse 
and be like, how would you like to receive? What kind of answers would you like to see receive? So like maybe if this is via email, like kind of just make three responses and see which one resonates the best. And um, another thing is also another thing that my mentor Tom Black says all the time is that he says if you want to give a quote, you want to give it over the phone. So I don't know if this is being done over email. Uh, are you able to do it over the phone? Uh, sometimes it's better to be able to present the benefits that you have of your company when you're talking to somebody just because you're able to tell them a little bit about, you know, why maybe you are higher than the, you are higher than the competition, but but because you, you offer X amount of value additional, you do these other things. If they're just kind of uh, comparing price, electrician versus electrician, this and this is like, you kind of, I, I, I would think that might, they might say, oh, no, I'm going to buy the materials. I'm going to do that. No, like you have a, you're, I would, I would think you have your way of doing things and you can accommodate a, a certain amount. So you got to see like how much are you willing to accommodate and all that stuff. So um, I, I would, that's what I would look at basically for that is as far as uh, answering somebody like that. I would do a little research um, and then just test, test, one, test one method out and see how it feels. How does, how does that resonate with you? Do you? How would you feel if you were the customer getting that response? You know, that's why I didn't like the, I didn't really like the, uh, let me charge you for my itemized quote. I didn't like that because I wouldn't like that as a customer. But maybe there's something else you could say where indirectly, um, um, may indirectly say no or say no, I don't want to give that or, you know, test different, me test different methods out to see which, which method you would enjoy best and re which method you would enjoy hearing best as a customer too. All right, perfect. All right, guys, so... I appreciate the questions. Um, if any follow-up questions, you guys could go ahead and, and send me a message here in the chat, in the in the message here. And I appreciate you guys for logging in today. Have a great one, guys. Thank you.